So I want to revisit the white Sharia meme and elaborate on it some more. And uh, it's really pretty simple. White Sharia just means it's not negotiable. Okay, it's not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. It's not negotiable. It's the law. Okay, so don't try arguing with me. Don't try negotiating with me. Don't try shaming me. None of this is going to work because it's the law and it's not my law. It's not Congress's law. It's natural law. Okay, I'm just the messenger here. I just look at the data and tell you what the data tells me. And what does it tell me? First of all, women voting. That shit's not going to last. It's not going to last. It's unsustainable. It's unstable. It's going to end. It's going to come to an end. It's an inevitability. And the reason is simple. It's because voting is violence or it's a substitute for violence or it directs violence. And violence comes from men, overwhelmingly from men. So, um, you know, when men vote, they understand that violence is the alternative. Violence is going to be the result or it's going to be the, or it's the alternative. Um, and so it can be a win-win to vote instead of fight. If the winners win more and the losers lose less, then it can be a win-win to vote even if you lose. Okay, but that's only true if the winners understand this and they restrain themselves. If they restrain their rapine and cruelty towards the losers. Now, men understand this, and in particular armed landowning men, to which voting used to be restricted. They understand that violence is the alternative, and they understand what to do to preserve the incentive to participate in the electoral process instead of reverting to violence. You know, women don't understand, and so they frequently don't restrain themselves in the demands that they make or the costs that they impose when they win an election. And so they don't preserve the incentives to, to participate in an electoral process rather than fighting. One other point, women can sway an election. They can swing an election. They can change an election. Not so with a battle, not so with a war. They don't fight. They don't supply violence. So they don't change the outcome of the battle. They don't change the outcome of the war. But... It's only preferable to participate in an electoral process and to abide by an electoral defeat if the outcome is the same as the outcome of a war. You know, it's cheaper to vote and to lose than to fight and to lose. But if you fight and win, that can be better than voting and losing. So if the outcomes are going to be different, then it can be better to fight. Uh, it's only better to vote if the outcomes are going to be the same as the outcomes of a fight. But since women can swing an election but not a fight, they can create that situation where it's better to fight and win than to vote and lose. Um, they don't preserve that incentive to maintain the electoral process and to abide by electoral defeats. You know, among men, uh, an election is a pretty good proxy for a war. Right? If more men support it than are opposed, you know, those men would win a fight, probably. Um, and so we can all abide by the electoral process, even in defeat. Right? With women, throws everything off. They change the outcome of, of elections, but they don't change the outcome of wars. So it's not going to last. And if it does last, the only thing that will happen as a result is they will weaken society, they will weaken the economy, they will weaken institutions to the point where they're overrun and destroyed by more vigorous and patriarchal foreigners. So it's coming to an end one way or another eventually. Don't argue with me. Don't try to negotiate with me. Don't try to dispute me. Don't try to shame me. It's not going to do you any good. I'm just the messenger. Second point, domestic patriarchy. Now, if men are the institutional power in society, if men are the um, political power in society, if men are the sovereign entities in society, then what sense does it make to have a society composed of households that aren't headed by the men? Right? That doesn't make any sense. That fucks up the chain of command. It's all backwards. It's illogical. 
All right, but even beyond that, you know, the only counter argument that you could make is, well, maybe households don't need a head. Maybe the household should do what the man wants when the man is right and what the woman wants when the woman is right. But the problem is, how do you determine who's right? You know, by definition, if there's a dispute over who's right, there's not agreement. And so, um, you know, if they're, if they're not agreed, then at least one of them has to be wrong. Um, but, you know, men are more likely to be right. They're just more likely to be right. Men aren't always right. They're not always righter than women, but they're more likely to be right. They're more likely. And so, um, you can cut out all that drama. You know, if there's a dispute, then you have to have an argument. Then you have to have conflict. You have to have drama. Um, but you can cut out all of that by just agreeing that the man is in charge, that his decision goes. Because, and you don't suffer any penalty in terms of worse decisions because the man is more likely to be right. He's not always going to be right. He's not always going to be righter. But he's more likely to be right. So you, you end up with better decisions and you cut out all the drama. Right? It's a no brainer. It's impossible for anyone to refute this. Um, and, uh, you know, especially in matters of fact, because see, men are much better at dealing with matters of fact because men deal habitually with matters of fact, right? Men go out and they do battle with natural elements and natural forces. That's all fact, all right? There's no, uh, emotion there. Nature doesn't give a shit about your feelings. Okay. That's, that's all fact. So men have to deal with matters of fact. And so men are better at it. Women inhabit a social environment where they, they, they deal in emotions and stuff. And they use these to manipulate men and to intimidate men, you know, socially and uh, emotionally, you know, through the feminine means of coercion, nagging, scolding, um, shaming, gossip, rallying, etc., so on and so forth. But if you are a household, you don't need to manipulate or to bully men into supporting you or providing you with resources because his resources are already at your disposal. And, um, you know, any man who's worth his weight in shit is going to consider your interest to be his own. He's going to consider the, the interest of every member of the household to be his own, right? So he's already enlisted in your cause. Your re his resources are already at your disposal. Um, you don't need to bully or manipulate him into taking your side because if there's any dispute it's only a dispute in matters of fact right that's what the the members of the household disagree about if they disagree about anything they disagree about matters of fact and um you know what decision is going to be the best for our interests not should we decide in our best interest but what decision is going to be factually in our best interests that's the dispute and in matters of fact Men are simply more qualified on average. That's just the truth. So, um, you know, it does make sense to vest the headship of the household in the male member, the elder male member. Um, and again, this is not negotiable. You know, any society that does this is going to be able to outcompete societies that don't. Any society that doesn't do this is never going to survive conflict and competition with one that does. Same as with voting. It's not negotiable. It's the law. It's natural law. Get over it. Don't try to argue with me. I'm just the messenger. Third point. Female promiscuity needs to be reined in. This is beyond dispute. Um, you know, and there is... there With the white Sharia meme... You know, there is this stuff about white Sharia rape gangs. It's a joke. Okay, it's a crude joke. You may not approve of it, but it's a joke. Okay, the point isn't to be positively compelling women to do certain things. Um, the point is to limit female choices. To limit females from making antisocial or self-destructive choices. That's all. We're not about positively compelling women to choose, you know, anything. Um... Now, it is a joke, but it's a serious joke because it has a serious point, which is that the longer things go, 
And the more out of line they get, the more severe the corrective measures are going to necessarily be. All right, that's a fact. So it's a joke for now, hopefully for a good long while. If this shit doesn't get fixed, maybe someday it'll be more than a joke. But for now, it's a joke. So get over it. I know it's tasteless. I know it offends a lot of you. But it's a joke. However, it's a joke with a serious point. Um, now, again, the point isn't to be positively compelling women. The point is to restrict or to limit options for doing other things that are bad. And uh, uh, how this factors into promiscuity, you know, um, you need to limit women's career opportunities. They can have jobs, but, you know, careers are for men. And uh, so you need them to seek support from a man in exchange for, you know, domestic and reproductive duties. Um, and so, uh, you know, you're not necessarily positively compelling that, but you're removing alternative means of obtaining resources and alternative means of seeking and obtaining and signaling status besides uh, motherhood and family and marriage. Because if women have alternative means of obtaining resources and alternative means of obtaining and signaling status, they're going to pursue those alternatives at least some of the time. And so there's going to be less marriage and family and motherhood and domesticity. And we don't need less of that. We need more. All right. So we do need to limit women's options so that they're practically compelled to choose a man of equivalent socioeconomic status and desirability, equivalent, approximately equivalent, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, but approximately equivalent. Um, and, uh, you know, this is necessary because right now under promiscuity, under, uh, you know, normative sexual licentiousness, women regard approximately, all women regard approximately 20% of men as desirable and 80% as undesirable. And, uh, you know, this is bogus because 80% of those women are not equivalent to those 20% of dudes, right? Only the top 20% of women are equivalent to those 20% of dudes. So, um, you know, those, uh, those other 80% of women have unrealistic expectations and they have those unrealistic expectations because they can get those 20% of dudes into bed when he's having a bad night. And so they consider them attainable and they consider themselves entitled to them. All right. But they're not obtainable because you're never going to get more than that. You're never going to get more than that, but you're never going to be happy with less, you know, if you're sport fucking Chad. So the promiscuity has to be reined in. The licentiousness has to be reined in. Um, and women's options and opportunities have to be reined in so that they're practically compelled to seek a man to support them. And a man of approximately equivalent socioeconomic status and desirability. Um, you know, women have to have kids, preferably at least three, that's a minimum, you know, unless you're underclass and you can't support them. Um, uh, but more is better than three if you can. Three is a minimum. You know, women have to choose a man. They have to have kids. This stuff is not negotiable. And, um, you know, once they choose a man, they have to stay with them. And that's because, uh, you know, two parents are better than one. And two biological parents are better than step parents. Biological parents invest more. They're less likely to abuse. They're less likely to neglect. So again, any society that maximizes this condition of having two biological parents is going to be competitive, is going to outcompete, is going to beat in conflict a society that doesn't. It's just a fact. It's natural law. Don't argue with me. That's just what the data says. Um, and, and, you know, that's all there is to it. I'm not interested in delaying inevitability. All I can do if I come over to your side is delay the inevitable. I want to hasten it. I want to get through this bullshit. I want to tear this shit down so we can get back to doing cool stuff like conquering the galaxy. So, don't argue with me about it.